So we all know that Tammy CC was opened in 1947, but what a lot of people don't know is that Tammy CC's origins can be traced back to an event that occurred nearly 4,000 miles away on December 7th, 1941. If that date sounds familiar to you, it's because that's when Imperial Japan attacked American soil at Pearl Harbor. This attack is what pushed the United States to become involved in World War II. Now, the United States military had several new technologies in development, including both radar and sonar, and many training facilities were opened in order to train military personnel to use these new technologies. A few of the training facilities included Chase Field in Beeville, Texas, Cudahy Field in Corpus Christi, Texas, and Naval Air Technical Training Center, Ward Island in Corpus Christi. Now I'm sure you're wondering what any of this has to do with A&M Corpus Christi, but I promise it will all make sense soon. In June 1944, the Veterans Educational Assistance Act, more commonly known as the GI Bill, was passed by President Roosevelt, providing financial assistance for all military personnel seeking education. After World War II ended in 1945, many of the military training facilities, including the three I mentioned earlier, were abandoned and veterans began flooding college campuses seeking degrees. It was during this time that Abria A. Sanders, a Baptist priest, decided to start a Baptist college in Beeville, Texas. This college would one day become TAM UCC. The original plan of Aubrey A. Sanders was to convert the abandoned Chase Field into a Baptist college to help improve the economy of Beeville and to develop Baptist leadership in the area. Mr. Sanders shared his idea with other Baptist priests, and they approached the Baptist General Convention of Texas, as well as the city of Beeville, in order to convince them that the college was needed. The city of Beeville offered to lease Chase Field to the Baptists for a rate of $1 a year. After months of discussion, the Baptist General Convention of Texas decided to accept Beeville's offer, and the Board of Trustees began organizing the college at Chase Field on December 16, 1946. In February of 1947, it was decided that the college's curriculum would focus on arts and technology. The board considered naming the college the College of Arts and Technology, but they did not want the name of their college to be abbreviated as CAT, which is ironic considering 70 years later, Tame UCC is inhabited by a tribe of feral cats. Anyway, Eventually, the board settled on Arts and Technological College, for lack of a better non-feline name. In early 1947, Aubrey Sanders began organizing a financial campaign to convert the former military base into a school. In May of the same year, tragedy struck when Sanders was killed in a car accident near Seguin, Texas. He was on the way to Beeville with a donation of $1,000 that he had collected in Houston. After the sudden death of Sanders, much of the driving force behind establishing the college in Beeville had faded. After the city of Beeville failed to raise their share towards the campaign, the Board of Trustees determined that the city was less interested in opening a college and more interested in freeing themselves from the burden of maintaining the abandoned Chase Field. At this time, many cities in South Texas were looking to adopt an open ATC as their own. Among these cities was Corpus Christi. A board of delegates, including the namesake of the Warren Theater, Guy Warren, met with the Board of Trustees for ATC and enthusiastically offered to raise $250,000 in funds to open the college if ATC was willing to relocate to Corpus Christi. By a vote of 9 to 5, the ATC board agreed to take Corpus Christi's offer. On August 9, 1947, about a month before the fall semester began, ATC officially announced to its prospective students that the college had been moved from Beeville to Corpus Christi and that it had no campus. Later that month, the Board of Trustees met in the White Plaza Hotel in Corpus Christi, they met with local leaders including Jeff Bell, executive vice president of the Chamber of Commerce and future namesake of the Mary and Jeff Bell Library, and Howard E. Butt, the owner of H-E-B Grocery Company. These local leaders suggested a temporary home for the college at Cudahy Field in Corpus Christi. The White Plaza Hotel served as the school's headquarters while Cudahy Field was prepared, and prospective students were asked to register there. The board met on September 1, 1947, announcing that the school's enrollment had reached over 300 and that the name Arts and Technological College had been abandoned. The students celebrated this as they cremated a casket labeled ATC before shouting 15 hurrahs to commemorate the school's new name, University of Corpus Christi.
Just as soon as UCC arrived at Cudahy Field, it had secured negotiations with the city of Corpus Christi for a permanent campus location. After just one semester of classes, UCC left Cudahy Field for their third and final home, Ward Island. Originally known as Island A, not much is known about the history of Ward Island before World War II. It is known that the island was originally only accessible by boat, and historians believe that hackberry trees are indigenous to the island and that a large pond was at one point located on the far east side. The known pre-World War II owners of Island A include Colonel Elihu Ropes, namesake of Ropes Park, and John C. Ward, who purchased the island in 1892 and named it after himself. In May 1942, five months after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. Navy created a contract to build a top-secret training center at Ward Island. This training center was commissioned as Naval Air Technical Training Center Ward Island, or simply NATC, on July 1, 1942. NATC was the only aviation electronic training school in the U.S. for over three years, and it is said that more than 10,000 electronics technicians were trained at Ward Island. In September 1947, Natsi was closed and relocated to Millington, Tennessee. In late 1947, UCC began renting Ward Island from the Navy, and classes were held at TAMUCC's final home for the first time in January 1948. In 1950, the Navy declared Ward Island surplus, and UCC officially purchased the island in 1951. Four years after the school was founded, it finally owned its own campus, and the school began making changes to erase the military image Ward Island had attained. The high iron fences surrounding UCC were removed, and the buildings were painted bright green and white. With these aesthetic changes, UCC began to look more like a college and less like a military camp. In order to further emphasize Ward Island's new educational use, the island was renamed University Heights in 1953. Though at some point the name reverted back to Ward Island, it is not uncommon to see University Heights on maps of Corpus Christi. Soon after UCC opened its doors, the subject of the school's mascot was put up to a vote. It was decided that the tarpon, a saltwater fish commonly found in the Gulf of Mexico, would be UCC's official mascot. The tarpon actually served as our mascot until 2004 when Tarpy the Tarpon was replaced with Izzy the Islander. Another symbol of UCC is the anchor. When Nazi moved to Tennessee, the Navy left an anchor behind. One of UCC's first presidents, Raymond N. Kavnis, dedicated the anchor to the freshman class. Each freshman class was responsible for maintaining the anchor, carrying the anchor to football games, and for protecting the anchor from rival universities. The anchor, representing strength and stability, very much became a symbol of the university, even inspiring a lost tradition known as the anchor ceremony in which the senior and junior girls of the university would partner up, forming the shape of an anchor. The senior girls would carry a large rope, representing leadership and their loyalty to their alma mater. During the ceremony, the rope would be handed over to the junior girls, passing on these responsibilities to the next graduating class. Throughout the 1960s, it was common for UCC's rival universities to attempt to steal the anchor, most of the time to no avail. However, the anchor was successfully stolen and sold for scrap metal by students of Texas A&I University sometime between the late 1960s and early 1970s. Over 40 years later, the original plaque from the anchor was returned at TAMUCC as dictated by the will of an A&I student who kept it as a trophy when the anchor was disposed of. In 2015, a new anchor was dedicated at TAM ECC to honor its origins. The new anchor has two plaques, the original plaque from the UCC anchor, as well as a new plaque detailing its history. In April of 1952, William A. Miller accepted the presidency of UCC and began developing a master plan to improve the school. Demolition began on the old Navy buildings as new permanent buildings were built in their place. This is when many of the buildings that still exist at TAM ECC were built. The Science Building, built in 1958, is now known as Classroom West. William A. Miller Hall, a male's dormitory, built in 1959, is now known as Classroom East. The University Library was built in 1963 as a donation from Howard E. Butt and Mary Holdsworth Butt. A fun fact about this building is that a few years after its construction, the Butts built a sister library in Kerrville, Texas. The University Library is now known as the Student Services Center or the Round Building. In 1967, 
the Glasscock Memorial Student Union Building was dedicated. This two-story building was essentially the university center of UCC, including eating establishments, a bookstore, a post office, and at one point even a gymnasium. This building is now known as the Glasscock Student Success Center. Its first floor is now home to CASA and PASS, though the second floor is now abandoned. In the PASS side of the Glasscock building, you can find its original chapel just as it appeared over 50 years ago. You can also find a model of one of Gus Glasscock's oil rigs in a glass case on the pulpit of the chapel. This model was originally located at the entrance of the Glasscock building. In 1968, the Moody Sustainers Fieldhouse was donated by the Moody Foundation and the Sustainers Club of Corpus Christi. Intercollegiate basketball was played here until the school joined the NCAA and the crowds became too large for the facility. On August 3, 1970, the University of Corpus Christi was nearly destroyed by Hurricane Celia. Many buildings lost large portions of their roofs, buildings were flooded, a few buildings were completely destroyed, and the university library experienced a loss of over 10,000 publications, the floor of the library being flooded with a mixture of water, book pulp, and pieces of neighboring buildings. The cost to repair the damages to the school were over $1 million. After the Baptist General Convention of Texas failed to offer financial support in a timely manner, the UCC board negotiated with the city of Corpus Christi and the Texas legislature to join the Texas A&I system as a state-supported university in 1973. The Baptist General Convention of Texas did, however, retain 10 acres of Ward Island for religious education so that Aubrey Sanders' original dream for the school wouldn't be completely lost once UCC ceased to be a Baptist institution and became Texas A&I University at Corpus Christi. This new name only lasted until 1977 when the school became Corpus Christi State University. Many important buildings were added during this era, including Corpus Christi Hall, the Center for the Arts, the Mary and Jeff Bell Library, and the Center for the Sciences. In 1989, Corpus Christi State University joined the Texas A&M University system. The name of the school was officially changed to Texas A&M University Corpus Christi in 1993. The 90s brought us the Center for Instruction, Hector P. Garcia Plaza, the University Center, and Miramar Apartments. The 2000s brought us the Performing Arts Center, the Engineering Building, Bay Hall, the Dugan Wellness Center, and the Momentum Campus. The 2010s added the O'Connor Building, Island Hall, the Islander Dining Hall, the Dr. Jack Dugan Family Soccer and Track Stadium, the Thomas J. Henry Tennis Center, Momentum Village Student Housing, and Tidal Hall. For over 70 years, TAM UCC has provided over 60,000 students a quality education with over 80 of the most popular degree plans in Texas. Throughout its lifetime, TAM UCC has had three different locations, five different names, and over 50,000 alumni. More than 70 years after Aubrey A. Sanders decided to open the Arts and Technological College, TAM UCC continues to evolve and expand and I'm excited to see what the future holds for this gem of a university.